Welcome to my channel, Tools for Ascension by Wolfgang, and I am Wolfgang. And in this video, we will have a guided meditation to help you smoothing out your ascension process. I will cover the 12 most important aspects of ascension, and let us face it, you know, a lot of you are waking up and are having a rough time. You are hanging on with your fingernails and keep on pushing forwards, you know, with your gums and eyelids. So, with my 12 steps for a smoother ascension meditation, I actually will be giving away some trade secrets. Mm -hmm. And please, yeah, do not take this meditation cheaply because it's free. You know, I rather get the good karma of helping you in your ascension than squeezing out some extra bucks yeah. so my inner guidance always says you know not to worry <laughs> i will always be a few steps ahead you know no matter what i give away and it's kind of the mahayana buddhism thingy where you get enlightened by you know focusing on enlightened so um, thank you also for supporting my channel by giving me the thumbs up and let's just define ascension first of all you know so you are a body and a mind and a spirit you know, work together and when you know this whole complex start vibrating at a higher level you know the way that you see the world will change actually you will see the world as it is on a higher vibrational level. And with that comes, you know, sometimes you may see auras around things and people. Or um, some of you may hear uh, ghosts, you know, hear voices. And unfortunately, uh, many of those are called schizophrenic. Uh, well, if it's a hallucination, you know, they cannot really argue with you well. But if they have logic to it, you know, then it's probably a ghost. And, um, you know, some of you also feel things that are invisible. You know? And or maybe you see things that are invisible. Uh, like you may be aware of a depressed mood <laughs> following you around or in the office. Or do you just know things, you know, how things are going to turn out? Some of you have a lot of more deja vus. Um, you know, telepathy, you know, this is definitely, you know, a big thing. Where, you know, with some people, you just know what they think at that moment. Or so you can think in your mind and send a message to somebody and they start reacting to this. It's becoming more prominent, we're becoming more aware of it. And of course more intense dreams, let's say with so-called hyper-reality, lucid dreaming. Another thing is on the beautiful side, you know, you feel the vibes of nature, especially when you smile and project love, or you feel energy moving through your body. And this happens quite a lot. And, um, you know, also sometimes when you're in a higher vibration, the colors seem to be more vibrant. And you also yourself, you seem to be feeling more light and vibrant. Yeah, that's all, <laughs> all the result of, you know, being in a higher vibrational state. It's nicer there, believe me. Of course, for you that have experience, you know, psychedelic substances, or, you know, are more advanced yogics or mystics, so this is nothing new, you know. But for the normies, you know, the normal people, uh, yeah, you know, they may think that they went over the deep end <laughs> and, and end up drooling, uh, you know, in a straitjacket, you know, for the rest of their life or get a chemical lobotomy. So, you know, the ascension is when you go into a higher vibration, you know, you 
there is less of an illusion about things. You know, the Hindus call this Maya illusion. And so it starts by figuring out that there is no such thing as the Easter Bunny. That it definitely was an invention of the dark chocolate cabal. And that Saint Nicholas was actually the Siberian shaman, you know, distributing uh, widely dotted red mushrooms as a sacrament, you know, with a sled, reindeer sled, around Christmas time. But there is more. Like, is the Christian god Elohim? the source of all type of God, or just a bunch of ETs that made Adam and Eve as beasts of burden. But there is more, you know. You may experience that trees are conscious, and mountains too. And you may know what others are thinking. We talked about telepathy. So ascension is the process of clearing illusion and getting what is really going on. And the German call in this uh, Durchblicken. You know? Think of it like the perspective you had on life when you were preschool. You know? And then when you were a teen. And then now. So after you know a few trial runs and hands-on experiences, you know, also known as the hard school of Knox, you know, we just know what, you know, and some of you find, you know, that um, WW, I'm not sure what, wrestling is not for real, and some of you find out the difference between good and bad ETs, you know, and that you might have been even an ET yourself, and that you maybe are an incarnation of God as I said. Now, another aspect of ascension is that the Earth is going through four seasons, you know, defined by the amount of sunshine available. Right? And our solar system also goes through four seasons, but they are totaling about 26,000 years. And these seasons are also defined by the availability of light. But this time, it is the light emanating from the galactic center. In some circles it's called the photon belt. And, uh, so, in this type of light, you, know, you can say the more light, the higher the vibration in the solar system. So, the more enlightened cultures, one may say, um, they all happened, you know, when there was you know, a high vibration available. Um, but of course, there are, <laughs> no, I'm not sure whether this is completely accurate, it might just describe it, and I mean, the Mayans talk about it. But think about it. You know, when we assume that the Atlantean culture, you know, was about 60,000 years old, this means they had about two, three um, Kali Yugas you know, um, cycles of complete, you know, dumbing down, going into low vibration, and then also um, maybe a destructive event. Now, according to Casey, there were actually uh, about, I think, three, maybe four destructive event, major events that wiped out Atlantis. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't correlated this. You know? But traditionally, the Kali Yuga, this is what we are supposed to in now or coming out of, you know, is the winter of spiritual light. You know, and ends with degradation you know, of the human culture and the dissolution event, you know, or a reset. You know, like maybe the flood twelve and a half thousand years ago, you know, or the meteor that took out the dinosaurs. Um, but that is a little bit on a speculative side, but you know, these are extinction events at least. So I haven't done any correlation between the geophysical events and the dissolution Kali Yuga cycles, but I, I think I'm going to put some remote viewers on it. Let's <laughs> check in with my clients if they're interested. So the point I'm making is that at the end of the Kali Yuga now, 
there's going to be a big awakening that comes with the increased light that is affecting the whole solar system, you know, including the sun and then, of course, more sun emanation, etc. And, of course, I mean, the whole thing can also blow up right now, you know, like large volcanic events, you know, like that whole Yellowstone system, <laughs> the Andreas Fault too, you know. And so, potentially, by the cycles that geophysicists you know, um, observe, um, you know, we are overdue for this, you know, and if the system blows up, um, this could lead to a nuclear winter, when nothing grows for maybe 50 or 200 years. So, you know, it seems that the outcome depends how loving and high vibrational humanity becomes. You know, the time of judgment, so to say, you know, where higher powers decide whether to pull the plug on humanity. Or not, you know, like they pulled the plug on the Atlanteans. So, consider the increased light that's coming in from solar center to act on humanity like a psychedelic. You know, a little bit more of a psychedelic in the drinking water every day, and it has an effect on humanity. You know, as we told before, you know, telepathy and so on. You know, slightly everybody start to trip, and stuff that was suppressed is coming up, whether you want it or not. You know, if you keep working on your stuff, it can be really joyful, and if you're not, you know, uh, it can be, you know, kind of like Uncle Willie getting drunk at the wedding again. So, <clears throat> um, as a general principle, you know, I have to say, um, an advanced mystic, you know, is really good at the basics. Mm -hmm. Just like special forces, they're really good at basics. They make them perfectly. So, you know, um, he should can ground, let's say, in under five seconds. Mm -hmm. And can connect to the heavens through your root chakra in under five seconds. Mm -hmm. And connect to source, you know, in bliss in under one minute. You know, even if you're on the factory floor or in a boring conference or in bad traffic. Yeah. So the following guided meditation, you know, will cover 12 basic steps, you know, that you probably should get down, you know, to make it through those times. All right. So first of all, you know, if you're podcasting here, no driving. You know, this is designed here to space you out. You know, it's going to be very dangerous. Now, for those at home, um, you know, you can lay down if you want to go to sleep. You can even put it on a loop, you know, when you right-click, you know, the uh, this video now, and then have it all night if you want to. It has quite an effect, and it's very relaxing. Uh, or, well, you know, you can also sit, like in an office chair. That's how I do it. In that way, I will stay awake, and uh, my feet connect better to the earth. I have a, you know, a vertical axis um, to the cosmos, so it's a better energy flow. Uh, so, also, you know, the tongue, you know, should be positioned at the highest point in your, the roof of your mouth, not behind the teeth. And uh, I like to swing around a little bit. It's called the Sufi grind. In that way, I don't get back pain, actually. You know, you build back muscle. Uh, but your spine always keeps moving, and, you know, your chi flows better. And um, now, um, close your eyes and smile. And we ask Absolute Source to surround you and me and this whole project you know, with its benevolent love and light that completely permeates us and transmutes all the ignorance and pain and darkness within us, transmutes it into love, light, beauty, and wisdom and high vibration. Um, um, um. 
We also ask that whatever happens in this meditation or from this meditation is for our highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. Amen. And we also ask that we only accept that what resonates with us, that is true for us, that is helpful for us, and reject you know, that is what is not good for us. Amen. So the step number one is solid grounding. So smile, Mother Earth is conscious, and imagine um, pulling her love through your legs and your root chakra deep into you. And on the exhale, you know, send your chi, your life force with your breath again through your legs and root chakra into the earth. So you're having a loving exchange of life force, you know, as visualized with your breathing with Mother Earth. Smile, deep breathing. And you want to hear the air flowing through your nostrils. That's the right speed. And we asked our highest self and our spirit guides and Mother Earth to clear from us any resistances and blocks that's separating us in a form of energy against our highest good. Amen. We want to have definitely included um, any trauma from this in past lifetimes. Spells, curses, dark technologies, implants, you know, dark room magic, dark magic, courts, dark portals, and other devices like chastity belts, chastity belts and things like this. Um, uh, um, and keep on breathing and smiling and connecting. And now um, there should be a shift in your energy. Mm -hmm. You feel lighter, you know. It takes about five seconds to start these clearing processes. And if you want to have a good connection with Mother Earth, you know, we definitely have to clear the offenses that you and your ancestors did against Mother Earth. For instance, <laughs> in many traditions, you know, we persecuted the children of the Earth, you know, the so-called Aborigines or Pagans, not only as missionaries, or conquistadors, but you know, just as a representative you know, of your state religion, and unfortunately, everybody thinks they are the best and they are right, and everybody else is wrong. And also, you know, the Mayans were ne not necessarily choir boys, so they had it coming. You know, 20,000 sacrifices a year, you know. Um, that was quite a con job getting the priesthood to believe that it was all to save the sun from dying. <laughs> so it's complicated. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. so we apologize, you know, for all the abuse and offenses we did towards Mother Earth and nature, like cutting down forests, poisoning wells, cursing ocean currents you know, to make fleets go down, like what happened to the Spanish Armada or the Huns. <laughs> they tried to invade the Mongolians, they tried to invade Japan. There definitely was some magic or ET involved. But all, you know, whatever damage was done, you know, especially cursing the lands of the enemies, you know, we like to have this cleared. Um, um, we want to be in really good relationships and also with the other beings, you know, that the fairies, they, the gnomes, and other beings that take care of Mother Nature that be offended, and also the rock people, for instance. We also ask for forgiveness right now. Um, 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 make sure you agree and keep on, you know, running this love back and forth with mother's hearts kicking in now. Good. 
so to be grounded it is really really important especially in these turbulent times it will clear the dark chi from you it gives your body energy it calms you down wherein it gives you strength etc now um, let's connect to our local sponsor the sun you know from which the updates come so in the proper amount um, the sunlight is very very beneficial for you for cell division for um, you know just its health in general um, <laughs> that's why sunbathing you know was always part you know of any good decent spa program especially in germany you know, the insurances you know didn't waste money they knew this stuff worked so being in the sun is a good thing but then smiling and having a loving exchange with the sun is a even different thing it's even better so now imagine and this is a really important skill bread and butter imagine pulling in the sun life into your heart and then send your love back to the sun this means you smile and you exhale you know imagine sending it to the sun don't worry about the distance on the astral plane distance doesn't matter now keep you know pulling the sun or exchanging this energy with the sun back Just keep on doing this. You know, this is definitely ABC, really important. It invigorates your heart, creates more love, you know, and brings important updates you know, and other information into you. You know, the people that don't get enough sunlight get depressed, right? The Nordics, you know, have big depression problems. So, now we ask the sun, for forgiveness I guarantee you that you or your ancestors cursed the sun many times when it was too hot or when you croaked in a desert or when your crops dried up and you knew you're gonna be struggling of course it was all the clouds fault but Seriously, we want to be in a really good relationship with the sun and we ask for forgiveness. We want to have the most enlightened exchange with the sun from now on. Amen, amen, amen. And keep on, you know, exchanging this love with the sun and now it's going to get stronger. As these blocks between you and the sun that were created through your curses <laughs> be cleared. Amen. Oh yeah, always feels good. Now another bread and butter. You know, you gotta have this down as a mystics. You have to be able to connect to your crown chakras. You know, there are many energy centers above your head. You know, you're not your body. You know, your mind, body, spirit complex is a bubble of energies. You know, the physical body being like the core stuck in the center on the lowest vibration. And the further out you get, you know, the more subtle your energy becomes. So, put your tongue to the palate, you know, the very top. And then imagine that you're pulling in the love from Milky Way Galaxy, the huge mama, mama of billions of solar systems. Pull her love through your crown, all the way into your root chakra, all the way to your coccyx. And then send your love up, Imagine her to be at the ceiling, so go back and forth with your breath, deep breathing, smile like an idiot. And if you ask Milky Way Galaxy, who is smart, conscious, and aware of you, super smart. 
He asked her to clear all the blocks, resistances, sabotage, spells, curses, you know, damage, you know, from getting your head bashed in, or imagined brain damage, and, and you know, other trauma, um, like uh, reverse crowns, crown of thorns, crucifixion implants, skull caps, and plates, and glass, and spikes, and screws, you know, and frequency screens, and other stuff. Yeah, clear, 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 clear. Um, keep on breathing. Yes, I'm probably gonna get this uh, elevator feeling above your head as this is being cleared now. And we ask that our crown chakras be protected yeah, against any dark manipulations and attuned properly. Um, Ah, uh, yeah, there should be another shift of energy right now, and just keep on breathing and smiling. And now, um, very important, call in your space family of love and light, you know, you as an Arcturian or Pleiadian, you know, your family, your support team, you know, people that are listening to my videos. <laughs> uh, coming from other places generally here you know trying to help out so let's call them in now you know of course they have to be approved by your high self um, and smile you know, you're probably going to feel the energy coming in above your head and sideways like a cupola or a dome above you and start pulling on their love on the inhale and you know, send your love back. And again, this process of exchanging love through your breath, you know, is I think essential for ascension. Very essential. It's an expression of love that can be applied, you know, very universally. And I guess unless you're loving, you not really make it, you know, unless you're really badass. And, you know, 95% polarized to service to self, and check out the raw material that talk about it. <laughs> yeah. So I would go the love path, but it's very essential. Yeah. So, yeah, now you should have you know, some pretty ecstatic energies coming in from the heaven. So, you know, running this love or pulling in this love through the crown chakra. I call this running love with the heaven. And now let's also call in our more earthly spirit guides, our totem animals, ancestors, like a, yeah, maybe even uh, like a dragons, or well, they're more multidimensional, but uh, definitely unicorns. And crystal energies, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of course, as approved by high self. Ah, yeah. You know, you probably feel this um, ring or circle of love around you. Mm -hmm. Smile. And don't scare them now. And pull their love in. Mm -hmm. On the inhale and then on the exhale, send your love back. And again, breathe so you can hear the air flow through your nostril. The stronger you breathe, the stronger the energy exchange. The more you smile, the sweeter the love. These are the two things you can manipulate besides pillow talk. So, when you receive this love from them, in your mind you think, I love you. And then, when you send your love back in your mind, you think, I love you. Don't say it with your words. You know, with your lips they're made for smiling. I think it. Train to be telepathic. You know, everybody else is telepathic, but humanity. The animals are telepathic, the trees are telepathic, the rocks are telepathic. <laughs> it's just the humans, you know, we got talked out of that. Probably has something to do with this, this tower that they try to build. Anyhow. Mm -hmm. 
And as a human being, as a decent human being, you know, we have to be connected with heaven and earth. You know, if you're only connected with the earth, you turn into a materialist, you know, with great opulence, but no appreciation for the higher and finer things in life. And if you mainly focus on your crown chakra and your root chakra is blocked and your feet are blocked, um, well, you probably have a hard time getting out of bed in the morning, holding down a job and paying your rent. And you have great ideas, but you don't have the discipline or stamina you know, to manifest it. So if you want to manifest, you got to be grounded. <laughs> That's at least one. But so we want to be, you know, in, in balance, you know, lots of heaven energies, you know, means inspiration and then, you know, the humfter from Mother Earth. So pull them together simultaneously into your heart, you know, smile like an idiot so you get that love. And then pull it in and just accumulate it, supercharge your heart. Is chi, of course, and love. Mm -hmm. Keep on breathing and accumulating, and now we're going to be doing step number four, which is essential, you know, for ascension. And I would say for a decent life, anyhow, whether you want to ascend or not. And that is being connected to absolute source. You know, nobody, nothing behind. You know, above or superior or more original. You know, people call this God. Of course, you know, there's a lot of, there are a lot of misconception around this. That's why I call this source. Mm -hmm. And we ask this source to open a portal in our heart, like a stargate with a wormhole that connects us straight to source. Of course, to a degree that we can handle. You know, we don't want to burn out. <laughs> mm, please do so now. Um, it's going to take about five seconds. Smile like an idiot. And, uh, you probably feel that pressure in your heart. And don't worry about how it's going to look like and try to visualize, but just start pulling this in with your breath. Just keep pulling this love into yourself as much as you can. Be greedy. You know, it's not a reward. You know, love is a medicine. It makes you a better person. <laughs> It makes you more beautiful, younger. Anything you put love on, you know, tastes better, looks better, <laughs> feels better. Good. Now you have gotten a certain amount of love and start sending your love back on the axle, you know, through the portal or through the depth of your heart. So you go on back and forth, very similar to running love with the heavens or running love with the earth. Well, you're running love you know, through your heart with source. And smile like an idiot, don't embarrass me here in front of source. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And well, let's straighten out stuff with source. And I guarantee you that in this lifetime probably in past lifetime for sure you know we curse God you know for the horrors of war we witnessed for losing loved ones you know for seeing so-called innocent you know being hurt and abused and blaming source for all this and then of course it's mostly karma <laughs> <clears throat> and then, of course, we also, you know, it's part of our curriculum, uh, worked on the dark side, you know, worshipping dark entities, you know, raping nuns, and killing little, little ones, you know, being really badass. And, uh, you know, cursing God, of course. 
trying to do it better. <laughs> all right, so, you know, it's all part of the curriculum of part of free will. You know, you got to make your free decision. You know, love is a free will thingy. And so the dark side, you know, comes with it then, you know. So you have to decide, I'm going to do this more or more of that. Now, you know, this is your time to make the decision. You know, I asked for myself, my ancestors, I want to be on good terms with Source. Please clear all the old offenses and damage that I did. And clear all the separations that I put up between you. Um, uh, um, I don't mean it. Keep on running love with Source and it's going to get stronger. Now, yeah, uh, yeah. Smile like an idiot so you feel it and keep on reading back and forth. If you want a samadhi out, you know, keep doing this. You know, if you wake up in the middle of the night, you know, you can't go to sleep, just run love with source. You know, if you don't go to sleep, <laughs> you're, good. you're gonna look like a god the next morning. And <laughs> if you fall asleep, oh, you're gonna sleep like anything. So, connecting with source is step number four. Really, 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 really important. Now, the next step is the one of projecting love. Mm, really important. You know, and not just to receive love, well, we exchange love, but projecting love is the next important skill. You know, it makes you a healer, it makes you friends. <laughs> so, um, you know, some of you may want to open your eyes and look at me, and some of you can just keep your eyes closed, <clears throat> and you probably will feel the difference. So, first of all, you know, make sure you smile like an idiot, and I'm going to take love from source into my heart and just send it in front of me. And see, you know, if you can feel it. Right? You probably can feel more from my breath when I'm exhaling. Start now. So some of you may have had some sensation, you know, feeling peace, you know, breeze, feeling actual love, head tingling, toes tingling, you know, seeing love, seeing butterflies and flowers, maybe even smelling stuff. So now start frowning. This means mouth corners down, you know, which means you're in your lower mind, you're negative. You know, start doing this now and see if you're getting any of my love. <laughs> I'm starting now. Then start smiling again. Okay, I hope you got the difference. Mm -hmm. So to get love, you got to smile. You know, if you frown, you're in your lower mind, you're in your survival mind, you know, you think you're the body, and you know, you're most likely not going to feel it, actually, the palsy. Okay, so the idea of projecting love you know, is really, really important, you know, this smiling, you know, especially, uh, <laughs> you know, try it out. You know, uh, how you connect with your world around you, you know, when you're smiling, especially in challenging circumstances, that would be your job. <laughs> Whether it's a boring office, you know, or a minefield of political intrigue, 
or just a really noisy, stinky place, you know, like a mill or <laughs> a stone mill or, you know, place where you weld and other industrial equipment is banging around. Don't even try your ex, you know, but uh, Xbox means your ex lover. Uh -huh. But the wedding, you know, and family get together, you know, also great playground for trying this out, you know, projecting love. Animals definitely also respond to it. Very, very, very important. How to make friends with this. Now, another very important aspect is as stuff comes up in your life to get purified, to get looked up and purified, you know, you have to learn to get to the root cause of a situation. You know, very, very important. So many of you have the gift you know, um, to get to the root cause, you know, but sometimes it's important to go to a pro professional, you know, like learning how to drive if you don't get it. So let's just ask, you know, your own inner guidance. Does your inner child need healing? Yes or no? See if you get an upflow of energy, and that means a yes. Another one um, is a lot of your know, a lot of your problems, you know, coming mainly through your father. Yes or no? And if you get a no, that would be you know an energy flow from the heart to the feet, like a downer. So this is just one easy way of getting in touch with your inner guidance. Let's do another one. Mm -hmm. Do a majority of your issues come from your mom? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And depending how strong the upflow or downflow is, or maybe just like a in the middle, you know, that's how you interpret that. Mm -hmm. All right. So, on the next, I would say, most important by getting to the root cause, you know, of things is that we start clearing karma. You know? So, if you find out <laughs> that you were a mass murderer, you know, in your last lifetime, you know, and there are like 50 angry ghosts, you know, trying to get revenge on you. You know, it's probably a good idea, you know, to do a past life regression. You probably need professional health there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, start clearing the damage. You know, this means, you know, um, apologizing to those ghosts and getting them into the heavens. You know, banishing, eh, I don't advise. I do not advise to banish these ghosts, you know. But to talk and to get them into the heavens, that's the right way, you know, but you have to, you know, go to a past life regressionist that knows, you know, how not just only to get you into a past lifetime, but to also clear, you know, the trauma from that dispels, curses, implants, and other damage, you know, as well as clear the pissed off ghost, you know. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you are the damage, you know, is there and, you know, a Freudian head trip, you know, is not going to, you know, help you there. So now let's ask your inner guidance. On my past lifetime, what is the biggest karma that is holding you back? Now we ask, you know, our highest spirit guides and our high self to clear as much as possible of that karma right now, you know, without us having to look at it. Um, um. Now, in my practical life, you know, in my work with my clients, I find that curses and vows have a tremendous effect on people's life. 
you know, generally the curse is from others. Sometimes we cursed ourselves, setting us up for failure, self-sabotage, or martyrdom, and many times we get cursed by others. You know, especially if you were beautiful or powerful or famous, you know, or gifted. Mm -hmm. You attract the envy of others or having an ideal relationship. You know, um, there are always some envious people that get used by the dark side and they curse you, you know, out of their jealousy. I mean, even in the animal kingdom, you know, we can observe that cats and dogs you know, definitely have jealousy and envy issues. <laughs> So it's not only humans. And so we just asked our highest self, you know, and our spirit guides and source to, for right now, you know, clear, you know, all the curses that can be cleared, you know, both ways. This means where we cursed others or, or our ancestors cursed others or where others cursed us and our ancestors. Right? So we want to have, you know, both of those cleared now as much as possible. Of course, there is stuff that we have to witness and see, but like death is whatever we don't have to see, we like to have cleared now. Um, um, um. And while this is happening, now ask, you know, what is the biggest curse that is affecting your life? You know, in which category is this? Is this career, love, health, wealth, happiness, friends? Mm -hmm. And let's ask for forgiveness. And again, we like to have those curses cleared as much as possible. So the next most important thing is to clear ghosts and other attachments. You now with ghosts, I mean discarnates, and there's two types of discarnates. Hitchhikers, you know, these are people that are attached to you in the hospital or when you're drunk or depressed they can get into your energy and then stay on you they ride on you they cannot produce their own chi they need the chi of other people to stay in this realm so they're going to drain your life force and generally try to affect your life with their emotions when they were suicidal you know you <laughs> you're depressed and have suicidal thoughts I mean, this is how that works. Uh, if they were choleric and angry, well, you know, they're going to affect you with their thoughts. And so, um, you probably also will feel their pain. You know, if they died in a car accident and, you know, their neck broke and suddenly you got neck issues. You know, so it's important to get get those into the heavens. And then there are the other type of ghosts are karmic ghosts. You know, lovers or enemies, you know, from past lifetimes following you around. You know, unfortunately, the lovers, you know, block all the other interest, love interests that you have most of the time, creating problems. You know, they're very possessive and judgmental. And then, of course, your enemies, <laughs> you know, they do anything to screw you over, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, you know, affect other people, you know, to not like you or make you do, you know, silly mistakes through oversights, etc. So let's ask, you know, are you um, negatively affected by ghost or other entity attachments? Yes or no? Now, um, of course, we can't get into the details here right now in this meditation, but we ask our spirit guides to clear those now, you know, as much as possible, and without us having to look at the details. You know, clear those that can be cleared now, send them into the heavens or to the courts of divine justice now. Amen, amen, amen. Make sure you agree and smile and project source love. Send this into the heavens. Oh, yeah.
there. So you have this elevator feeling, you know, the energy is just floating up your head. Generally, there is a big release from your back and other aspects of your force field. And we ask the spirit guides to keep, you know, liberating these aspects so they do not get stuck with us. And then as they leave, you know, clear all their baggage that's still with us. You know, there's certainly an overlay of their emotions, thought forms, and um, physical maladies on us. Mm -hmm. So you like to have this cleared now. Um, 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 make sure you agree. Now, number 10 is like, um, you know, becoming aware that you also incarnated in other races. So number 10 is becoming aware that you're not just only, you know, what you think you are. You know, that you're not only white or black or whatever. You know, it's important for many because, you know, being in the illusion, number one is, of course, you think you're your body or you are your culture, you're willing to fight and die for your culture, you know, which you hope you're in a good culture. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so I think it's important to overcome, you know, these uh, false identification. You know, like I'm not thinking that I'm a Ford or a Subaru or a Toyota because I drove those cars. You know, that was just a convenience, you know, for these times. So, let's just ask your own divine guidance. And uh, have you been, have you had white incarnations? Yes or no? Have you had black incarnations? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Have you been incarnated in the red race? Yes or no? Have you been incarnated with the yellow people? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And have you been incarnated as a brown one? Yes or no? Well, you know, I got a yes hit for all of them, so that should nip racism in the butt. <laughs> Now, to even expand, you know, you are, um, so we like to have all those racist you know, um, ideas, you know, cleared from us. You know, and also all the spells, curses, and prejudices, you know, that came with. You know, I think it's really important to see the individual, what it is, you know, and not judging by the color of their eyes. <laughs> or of their hair, or of their skin, you know, I mean, look at, you know, are they smiling or not, you know, are they sick or not, are they strong or weak, you know, are they happy or not, you know, look at those things, it's, it's the purity in their face. So, um, but now we want to expand even further, you know, um, ascension is basically an expansion of your awareness. So most of you probably still think that you are, you know, essentially a human. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for probably most of you, you know, that is not really, <laughs> in essence, you. No, or at least you have been in other bodies, too. So, let's just ask your own highest self. Um, have you been incarnated in subterranean species? Yes or no? Have you been incarnated as a reptilian? Yes or no? Have you been incarnated as a naga? This means an advanced snake. Yes or no? Have you been incarnated as a gray? I mean, with the soul? Yes or no? Have you been incarnated as a Draco? 
Alpha Dacunian or Rakshasha, yes or no? And some of you may freak out when you find out that you <laughs> were incarnated as a Draco. So the next question is, have you voluntarily incarnated as a Draco? Yes or no? Were you force incarnated as a Draconian? Yes or no? There's a big difference there. And uh, have you been incarnated as an Atlantean? You know, these were, you know, more superior, far superior to humans. They had those longer skulls, you know, much larger pineal gland. So, have you been incarnated as an Atlantean? Yes or no? And for some of you, you might actually get a yes, no on the next one. Have you been incarnated as an Anunnaki that is of love and light? Yes or no? And have you been incarnated as an Anunnaki that is walking the dark side? Yes or no? And you might have gotten, like, oh, have you been incarnated as an Anunnaki at all? Yes or no? Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Dark side and light, light side on the Anunnaki, that's kind of a really complicated thing. Anyhow, um, have you been incarnated as an insectoid? Yes or no? And have you been incarnated as a tall white? Yes or no? Have you been incarnated as a Pleiadian? Have you been incarnated as an Arcturian? Have you been incarnated as a Lyran? And you asked those if any aspects of them are still stuck somehow, you know, kidnapped somewhere in some tanks or vats, experimented on, tortured, siphoned for life force, you asked that to be liberated, no? Um, 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 you know, the essence returned to your soul. Um, um. We also ask now that all the soul fragments that can return to us now be returned to us and integrated, updated, healed, and then brought to optimal energy levels and then protected. Um, um, um. We ask for an easy integration you know, of what we learned now. And we give our highest self permission to keep us on the path of enlightenment. Um, um, um. And one, two, three, we are fully grounded now back in day, day consciousness and protected. Um. So practice these things. You know, of course, number one is easiest, you know, and just keep practicing those. You get down the basics, you know, get solid, you know, be able to ground in 20 seconds, in 10 seconds, you know, connect to the heavens in 10, 20 seconds, you know, open source love in 50 seconds. You know. It's not an Olympic, you know, but these are skills, you know, we should always be there. But just like physical therapy, you know, we gradually have to build up your skill level, your strength level, you know, till you can do this all the time. <laughs> you don't uh, drive now, you know, you're going to be spaced out, drink a lot of water to integrate. 
um if you have any questions you know or had about experiences just uh, keep it you know, in the comments there if you want to get in touch with me to help you with some spiritual issues if you have spiritual questions you know i'm free for sessions um, on skype or zoom um, you know my contact information is um, below and uh, you know um, if you really if you're new to my channel and, and you enjoyed this meditation and if you had a strong reaction um you know this means you resonate with my message and i advise that you try the other videos too you know they are all designed you know, to specific areas of your life that need uh, purification you know? And this is all based on my personal experience, you know, with past life regression, with you know, thousands of clients all around the world, from all kinds of cultures. You know, this is my life's work. I do not uh, think um, because it's free; it is not potent. You know, uh, you know, it's free because of good karma. And I, uh, you know, uh, I, I want you to be and come in light, you know. Um, I will always be a couple of steps ahead. <laughs> I love you long time. Namaste.